Hey everybody, this is Tyler with Mackletech again. Today we're going to be doing a video on how to test your AVR and brush excited generator in. This is a single phase unit, like most of them are, and we'll be seeing if we can narrow it down for you or give you some basic instructions of how to test around it to get you up and going. Um, you're just going to need a few simple things, an 8mm socket or wrench to get your end cap off, which is this right here, a 12 volt battery, a multimeter with ohms and AC output testing, and then just two leads for your negative and positive on that 12 volt battery. So by the end of this video hopefully we can get you up and going or at least narrow it down to what you need to get you up and going. So let's get a little bit closer into this and get going. To start off we will be removing the generator end cap. It's easy. It's two 8 millimeter bolts. Once you pull this off you'll see in here your AVR regulator with brushes. This is the AVR. You can tell it's got two separate leads that go up to your brushes and then a quick connect disconnect four wire plug here. Um, first inspect this the top side make sure it's not cracked broken it's still connected at both ends and then also inspect your wires right here make sure they're all connected none of them are broke off with a screw in here if not all that checks out what we're going to do next is remove the regulator it's easy unplug it remove it from the two brush leaves and then this is held in with two eight millimeter bolts also one at the bottom one at the top and it comes right out so once you remove that you'll see here you have a tower capacitor if this is blown definitely need to replace the regulator before going any further and once you get that you want to see how the power is going from there so next we have our brushes these right here are going to be your brushes they're held in again 8 millimeter bolt so unscrew that they will pop up if the uh, brush tips are still pretty long and it just slides out you see here these are your actual brushes they're both pretty much the same size they got good spring good length left to them so I know these are good um, if you want to make sure you have a good connection between the brush tip to your connection just take your um, your own meter see if you have continuity from the tip to here if you do you know you're getting good connection there so that's not where your problem is going to lie while you have the brushes out it's good to look at your slip rings let me get the camera up in here these right here are your slip rings your brush rise on each one of them those two golden rings now your slip rings need to be nice and shiny if they're really black and dull you need to get some emery cloth buff them up a little bit and see if you can connect everything and get power going again also on your slip rings you see this right here this little tab has a wire soldered to each slip ring you have one on this side if you rotate the rotor you have one on the other side sometimes the solder joints can come loose and if your wire is not connected that is also going to be an issue so inspect all that if that all checks out we'll move on to your output leads. So here's your 120, 240 output right here. These, this will be your hot. It's usually red and black, and then in between is usually a neutral. On this particular unit, all the neutrals are on one lug here, which is R1. Um, sometimes you'll have a set of neutrals here and then a set of neutrals below it. So if you're testing for the power output, if you're 240, you would go between the black and the red. And then if you're 120, you would go from red to neutral, should be 120, and then black to neutral, should be another 120. Um, what we're going to do is disconnect the output leads to isolate the generator in all on its own so we can do some ohm testing. And it's easy. This, it should be held in with little 8 millimeter nuts. Three or four, depending on your setup. Once those are removed, you just want to remove everything that's leaving the gen end 
and going up to your panel. So we got these th three removed here. We're going to put this one back. From here, you can leave the bolts off. Just make sure all your leads are still connected. And do not forget to remove the ground. So from here the generator end is completely isolated from your control panel. Uh, you want to do this to keep any faults in your control panel causing the gen end to ground out um, before you do any ohm testing or anything like that. So I'm going to get an ohm sheet for this unit in particular. Um, it's one of the ones that we actually deal with. Uh, different brands have different ohms so depending on what brand generator you have you need to contact the supplier of that and see if they can get you an ohm sheet sent out so you can get the correct testing. We're going to start off ohm in our main windings. Um, we're going to go from L1 to R2 first, which would be your two hots. We should be getting right about 0 0.2, 0 0.3. There we go, 0 0.3, 0.2. Uh, let's go from our neutral to hot. same right at point two and then our other hot to neutral point three so we're good there next we'll ohm out the rotor to ohm the rotor you ohm between the slip rings they're usually between 50 to 60 ohms getting a 51.5 so that's definitely good and then next is going to be our AVR plug. The two yellows usually show an extremely low reading, usually 0 to 0 0.2. And that's right what we're getting, 0, 1. And then the two grays are usually about a 1.2. Okay, so 1.5 is still in the range of it. Range from 1.2 to 1.6, so we're good there. Next, of course, since the gen end is isolated all by itself, if you ohm from your mains to ground, you should be getting nothing. You should be getting an open on there on all of them. So you just want to double check all those. and everything's showing no reading so we're good to go on that. So I've got your brushes reinstalled here and I've bolted back down the main winding so when it's running it will not uh, vibrate them off or anything. Um, before we induce it I'm going to show you what the normal output on AC voltage for the brushes should be. Normally it's roughly around 10-13 volts depending on your unit um, and your main lead output. Um, usually that runs about five to seven output. So let's see what we got. that there was putting out normal voltage. What we're going to do now is we've narrowed down everything seems fine. We'll be going to run 12 volts from our 12 volt battery to our brush terminals. And what we should see when we do that is while the unit's running we're going to hook them up and we should get a constant 60 to 70 AC output on your main windings. If we do, we know the rotor and brushes are functioning correctly and the problem could be lying in our uh, AVR or the, or the uh, winding that reads and regulates your power to your brushes. Um, so here, we're just going to hook these up real quick and get it up and going and we'll show you what the output should be on that.
I did get the correct 60 volts coming out of your 120 and the roughly 120 volts coming out of the 240 side. It does tell me my brushes, rotors, that's working correctly. So it's leaving the problem is either going to lie in your AVR or something in your stator. It could possibly be that your exciter coil, the uh, coil that feeds and monitors your regulator to up and down your power. It could be grounded out, shorted out, and that could be your issue. If that is the case, you would have to get a new uh, stator or generator assembly depending on how they sell them. Um, if not, you can always try a regulator. They can be pricey. You can uh, take one off of another unit if you have one standing around and test it. Your readings on the regulators are usually on the rim right here. This is a 7KW. You can usually use something between for this one probably a 6 or an 8 and you would actually get power but when you do replace them if that ends up being the issue you want to go back with what was originally in your unit. Um, one thing I'm going to get her back together everything hooked up and show you what the actual output should be you should be able to test it between these get your 120 and 240 and that would be everything running fine like it should be correct RPMs um, one other thing if your RPMs are too low or too high you will get a higher or lower voltage output along with a higher or lower Hertz output so usually on your engine there is a place to fine-tune that uh, on the carburetor or on your governor so if that was the issue fine tune that so you're getting your 120 240 out with your 60 Hertz or 50 Hertz depending on the location that you live in Now, if you're experiencing any problems with the panel hooked up and uh, you were not with the generator and isolated by itself, you're going to want to look in your panel for a short and a plug, um, something not connected correctly. Um, you could have a wire leaving here that's maybe broken going in. It could be multiple things, but if your generator is producing power here, fine. You hook everything up. It's not producing power you have an issue in your panel and um, other than that it should be about all the easy testings you can do um, one other thing if you are concerned your brushes are usually labeled they should have a positive and a negative stamp usually it's right here in the center this one does have a positive I don't believe you can see it and this one does have a little negative made into the housing of the brushes um, if you have any questions you can always email me at tyler at macletech.com I'll put a uh, link in the description we do sell parts for the generators we support which are usually the um, any engine that is a lawn top brand LCT brand uh, Wuxi um, and there's a few other little ones um, other than that you would want to contact your actual manufacturer of the unit to get the uh, parts and or schematics for your unit um, so hopefully this helps you out gets you up and going at least in the right direction and until next time have a good day